Hallelujah. Well, last night, yesterday, actually, I had a, had a vision, so I'm going to share that. But you know me. I have visions, but I always back it up with the Word. If, if we're just basing our theology on uh, experiences, the enemy can give us ex- experiences. That's where we've seen a lot of people go off track. Are you all with me? Somebody had a vision, and then suddenly, well, this is the new revelation. I mean, we've seen religions started from a vision or an encounter. We've seen that go against the word of God. So we've got to be very careful to make sure that whatever we're experiencing, it lines up to the word of God. Because God will never go contrary to the word of God. Now, y'all love, y'all know me. I love the prophetic. I love visions. I love encounter. I love the word of God. I love all of those things. But if we get off course... I, I've had a, 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 a slight concern in the body of Christ that if we get off course onto certain things, well, this, you know, I had a vision of this. It's a new revelation. Well, praise God, he does give us new revelations, but it builds upon the solid foundation. I'm going to make some religion mad today. I feel like a Kim Owens anointing coming on to make religion mad today. Hallelujah. Y'all don't get mad. Don't be trapped by a spirit of religion. I bind it in Jesus' name. We are free indeed. But I did. I had a vision last night, and I'm going to just read some of it because I wrote it better than I can probably explain it. But I saw two glass elevators, and these elevators had people inside of them. Now, two individuals, one individual in one elevator, one in the other. And one was on the ground level, and the person was pushing the buttons. I can still see it right now. They were pushing the buttons and frantically trying everything they could to get the elevator to work. The other person was in another elevator right beside it, and it was at the top level. I I don't know how many floors it was. The Lord didn't... Give me the answer to that. But I knew it was at the top level. So the person was at the bottom in the glass elevator, pushing the buttons, trying with all their might to get it to move and to to happen. The other person was at the top level, and they were on their phone. Just, I don't know what they were doing. But, you know, this little phone is a powerful tool because we can use it to spread the gospel. But it also can be a big distraction. Somebody say hallelujah. See, that's what the enemy wants to do is distract us. He wants to distract us from our purpose. He wants to get us over into entertainment so we can't hear the voice of God. There's nothing wrong with entertainment as long as it's not pulling us from the presence of God. Hallelujah. But this person was on their phone and they were just... I just got a text from Zaxby's. The devil trying to distract me from my. Mm -mm, I'm not going to be at the top level looking at my phone. But the person was at the top. Chicken does sound good, but hallelujah. I'm going to feast on the manna this morning, on the word. Exit out so I don't keep seeing that because they're having a special. If y'all want to go after church, they're having a special. (laughs) The real holy chicken, Chick-fil-A, is closed today for worship for God. So y'all go tomorrow. But anyway, back to the vision. (laughs) And the person was just on their phone and they were doing all of these things. And and suddenly, I'm going to read it to you like the Lord explained it to me. And they were trying so hard, but nothing was happening. Then the one on the top floor was on the phone, not paying attention. Suddenly, the elevator on the ground floor catapulted to the top, and the elevator at the top descended to the ground floor. So it was like a switch happened. Are y'all with me still? I wish I could draw because I would draw y'all pictures so y'all could follow along with me. But uh, just picture it in your mind. He gave us creativity. The Lord says, come on, here's the word. It's time for elevated sight. I am giving you expanded vision. 
I am bringing alignment to things out of balance. Now, here's a warning. Be sure to pay attention. Are you hearing me? Be sure to pay attention. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to be distracted from your assignment. Like the man on the phone. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to be distracted from your assignment. I have seen your effort. Oh, this is for somebody today that's been pushing the buttons with all their might. You've been trying. You've been making effort. You've been saying, God, I want to go higher. I want to see what I've never seen. This, I've got good news for you today. This is a word from the Lord. He says, uh, uh, you've tried so hard, and I've seen your effort, and I've seen uh, uh, what, uh, what you have been attempting to do and he says now I am causing you to be launched and to be catapulted into a new perspective he says don't allow old things to restrict you and limit you be free today see that's my assignment today that's why I came into prayer and I started pressing and I started calling the people to press why because there's some people that came in here bound to some old things that has been keeping you on the ground level to where you could not see clearly and you've been trying with all your might but God says this morning be free from the distractions be free from the old things because it's a time of launching and it is a time to be catapulted he said when the the man in the elevator or the person I don't know if it was a man or a woman but the person got to the top level it was a glass elevator and they could see all around and he said No more restricted vision. You're getting an expanded. You're getting an expanded vision. An expanded vision. He said no more small. Now see, I have uh, vision. It's not that bad, but it's. It's a little, I think it's like negative 1 or negative 1.5, and it's, it's nearsightedness. So the other day I had glasses on, and someone said, oh, you're at the age where you need reading glasses? I probably am, but I don't. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but they're for, for distance, you know. So when I'm driving or something like that, I put them on. And, and I, I thought when I first put them on, It was like, you know, I didn't even, I had LASIK years ago, uh, but I know this is, I'm getting somewhere, so just stay with me for a second. And so I I never thought I would need glasses again. And so signs started getting blurry, so I'd squint to see, I could see the sign, I just couldn't make out what it was saying. So I would squint to see it. Anybody ever had that problem? Come on, I see some of you squinting at me this morning. But so I went to the eye doctor, I got glasses. And when I put them on, it was amazing how things that were out of focus suddenly came into focus. And it was like I could see much, much clearer. That's what you're going to be able to see, expanded vision. You're about to see things that you have never seen before because things have been so clouded by the enemy. Hallelujah. I want you to go to Luke chapter 13. But before we, you can start turning there, but... Before we go there, I want to say this. The enemy is after your vision. Not just your natural vision, but he's after your vision. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. I love one translation says, where there is no prophetic vision, people die out. See, that's why we need the, the, the office of the prophet. That's why we can't, you say, well, I don't, why all these people calling themselves prophet, apostle, why, you know, what does it matter? You don't get offended by pastor. So what does it matter? You're just referring to the gift or, or uh, the office that that person walks in. So, uh, but I think we get 
so hung up on that that we want to get away from some of the offices of, uh, uh, that walk in the fivefold. I don't know about you, but last time I checked, the church isn't perfect. And the Bible says that he was giving to us the fivefold offices, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And, and this world is in a crazy day, and we need the fivefold to bring. Hallelujah. This is a prophetic apostolic house so if, if you get offended by that I'm sorry but this is who we are and that's what we're called to do in this mission and and so the Bible tells us that the enemy is after our vision because when we have vision we're focused that's why he dangles things trying to get us to turn to the left or to the right so that we'll get our eyes off of what God has said. That's why the enemy has sent uh, the wiles of the devil, is what the Bible says, the wiles of the devil to try to get you off course, to get you off focus, to get you out of your assignment. But I've come to call somebody back into their assignment this morning. I've come to call somebody back into their assignment. There's people that aren't even here this morning and I'm calling them prophetically back into their assignment. You don't have time to go to the left or to the right. God has called you for such a time as this. Get back into your place of battle. Get back into your assigned place because that's where the Lord will use you. Woo. Let's go to Acts chapter, I mean Luke chapter 13. Now y'all stay with me for just a moment. I'm not going to preach long. But I'm going to preach right in Jesus' name. Let's go to Luke chapter 13, starting with verse 10. And it says this. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bowed together and could no, in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Now, I know there's a popular book, conference, sermon that you may have heard. I don't know, it's a little thing called Woman, Thou Art Loosed by Bishop T.D. Jakes. It's awesome. So don't compare this word to that word because we're different vessels in Jesus' name. But it's the same Holy Spirit. And it says, and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Mm. I hate the spirit of religion. Verse 15. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to the watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then said he unto, what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and cast into the garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree. And the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. So he said, it's like a mustard seed. Have you ever heard of mustard seed faith? But I want to concentrate on the story of this woman because I want us to expand our vision this morning. I want you to look at verse 11. I want to bring out some points here because it says, and the ruler, uh, uh, verse 11 says, Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit 
of infirmity for 18 years. Now, this is a long time, 18 years, to have a sickness. The word describes, and I read it in multiple translations this week to study it out. It describes that she was bent over and that she was uh, like she was uh, bowed down. Can you imagine? I, I'm not going to do it for the camera this morning because it's, it, it would not be a pretty shot. But uh, bowed together like this, walking around. Every time you're walking, every room you walk in, you're trying to look up, but you're bowed together, and you're bowed together, and you're, it's like you're bowing down. So everywhere you go, you're trying to look up. Or, uh, come on, are you getting it this morning? You're, you're, you're bowed over, and the woman for 18 years is walking through life like that. See, some of you today, you're going through years and generations, and maybe you're not bowed over in the flesh looking up like this. But in the spirit, you've been bowed together. You've been down, and you're trying. Like the vision I saw, that she, uh, the, the person was pushing all the buttons, trying with all their might. She tried to get healed. I'm sure she had people stretching her, doctors trying to pry her open and apart so that she could uh, stand straight up. But there was nothing working. What do you do when nothing works? You know, when we have a headache, the first thing we do. Do you have any Tylenol? Hey, do you have anything for a headache? I'm with you. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. When you've tried everything else, it's time to run to Jesus. Or try him first. That's even better. Let's try him first. But some of you have been trying. And you're saying, God, I can't see clearly. I can't see clearly the season I'm in. I can't see clearly what you're doing behind the scenes. I can't see clearly where I'm at or what I'm doing. I don't know what you're asking me to do. I don't know where to go, what to do. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. This woman was in a condition, and she had dealt with a spirit. We know it wasn't just a sickness because there is such a thing as natural sickness that, that because we've made poor cho choices or decisions or, or even born with some things, that, that we, there's a natural sickness. Are y'all with me? But there's a difference between a natural sickness and there, there's something that the enemy had all sicknesses of the devil. But there's, she was dealing with a demon. She was dealing with a spirit that had put her in a place of compromise. She was dealing with a demonic spirit that for 18 years had restricted her vision. All she could see was from a low place, walking around. See, my neck's hurting even right now, just doing it for a second. I can't imagine for 18 years, everywhere I go, hi, Cindy, it's nice to meet you. Can you imagine? Although some of us have been doing that. I don't know what happened to this woman 18 years prior that opened the door to a demon to bow her together. I don't know what happened. Maybe she was molested. Maybe she was uh, raped. Maybe she uh, had, had gone into witchcraft. I don't know what opened the door. All I know is that this woman had a condition that looked impossible. And it restricted everything that she could see. Everything that she could do. And what do you do when you can't see ahead of you and everything looks hopeless? Well, I've been like this for so long. I guess it'll be like this for the rest of my life. It, it, it's, I've always struggled. I've always, uh, I've always uh, people have always rejected me. I guess they'll always be. You're wearing a label of rejection. 
you're wearing a label saying, I'll always be in this condition. I'm telling you, some of us walked in this church. Some of us walked in this building. And maybe we don't have a label on our shirt, but we might as well have a label on our shirt that says rejected, hurt, broken, uh, uh, never coming out of this, victim, sick. I remember one time I, I had a, a lady in our ministry, and she wasn't just sick occasionally. She was sick continually. And she called me after church, and, and, and she said, you know, Pastor, I'm, I was sick this morning. Now, this was like the sixth week that she was sick. And I said to her, I believe you're dealing with a spirit of infirmity, and we need to take authority over it. Because it wasn't like a condition. You know what I'm saying? Are you with me? It wasn't a condition of, of sickness. She wasn't dealing with a disease that should cause this. It was just, you know, this was happening, and then that happened, and then this happened. And, and I said to her, now she, she, I'll tell you, she got offended and actually left the church. But I truly know that it was an affliction, a, a spirit of infirmity. I know this wasn't just something that she was dealing with. Now, God ha has restored her and, and moved upon her life. And I still, you know, we still talk to her and see her at times. But uh, I, I knew she was dealing with a spirit of affliction because it was a generational curse that her family, we know her family, her family had dealt with. Her parents had dealt with. Her grandparents had dealt with. It had been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And she didn't understand it because she had a zeal and a passion for God. But the enemy had an opening in her life. And now uh, her child is even dealing with this same spirit. This woman in the word had dealt with this for 18 years. Now, it's something to deal with it a day, a week, a month. But when you're going on years, when you're going on years, people don't feel sorry for you anymore. Or they, they uh, feel so sorry for you, they leave you in that victimhood of you'll always be that way. Oh, let me do for you because that's just the way, that's your identity now. That's not who God said you are. You are not called, I'm prophesying to you right now. You are not called to be bent over with a limited perspective of everywhere you go looking like a victim. Like I'm beneath you. I, I, I can't see you clearly. But God said it's time. Today is a day of appointment. I know you came in this room and some of you were bowed over together by the circumstances of life. But I came with a word from the throne of God to say be free be loose yes. this morning this morning this morning you don't have to leave those doors like you came you do not have to leave this service like you came I know you came in here weighed down by the affliction weighed down by the label of life but I'm telling you this morning he that the son hath set free is freed indeed He's come to set the captive free. And when I was reading this text this week, I pictured this woman and how that she was bowed together or buckled together, bent over. And she could not free herself from this position. See, sometimes you need someone else as an agent of awakening Come on, y'all. I have a chapter in my new book called Agents of Awakening. So that's, that's in my vocabulary right now. But sometimes you need someone that will say, hey, I see your condition, but that's not what God has called you to be. I saw that you were raped at a young age. I saw that you failed God. I saw that you had an affair. I saw that you went through a divorce. I saw that you went and smoked pot yesterday. I saw that you went and got drunk last month. I saw the things that you went through. But I'm telling you, that's not who you are. That's not your identity. God says you are a child of the Most High God. Yeah. And Jesus sees her 
Verse 12 says, when Jesus saw her, and that uh, uh, when I was reading that, uh, it leapt in my spirit. It leaped up in my spirit that, that when Jesus saw her, he saw what happened to her 18 years ago. He saw how the door was open, how that spirit came into her life and began to afflict her. And it moved him. And this woman had come. Now listen, this woman had come to the synagogue. She had come to worship. It's amazing how many people will come to worship and leave like they came. Because religion says, we can't touch you on the Sabbath. You should have come one of the other days. It's amazing to me how many churches, pastors, leaders, Christians will say, oh, not today. I got to get here. I got to do this. Little Tommy's got a game. Little Susie's got to get over here. I'm cooking dinner for 20 people. I don't have time to, 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 to travail this morning. See, that's why Jesus appeared to 500, but only 120 waited for the promise of the Father because they were too busy. We get too busy. If they don't sing just the right song I like, I'm checking out. If you don't preach just the right thing I like in the way you, I like it, and if you're not wearing what I like, then I'm going to sit here and I'm going to let you know. Y'all don't think it happens. It does. I see faces. Come on. I, the thing about it is I'm free. You can't control me from the seeds. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I've already tasted of a real God. I, I'm not letting you get me bowed over it again. Come on, nobody's worth missing what God has for you. I love you, but I'm not going to let you rob my destiny. This woman has said, Jesus, in the midst of everybody. See, it's amazing to me. Everybody else ignored her. Everybody else left her in that condition. They didn't care if she came or not. Let's just do our religious duty and get through the service and get back to our life as usual and smile at everybody, pat everybody. Make sure you give your offering by the end. Hallelujah. But we got we, we to move this along. But Jesus saw her. And he said, you are not. No, no, no. I see what happened 18 years ago. Loose her spirit of infirmity and let her go. See, this morning you thought you were coming for a happy sermon. And this is a happy sermon because we're going to see deliverance this morning. I said some of you have been bound too long. Some of you have been oppressed too long. Some of you have been wearing labels too long. But God says you are not that label. I don't care what a parent told you. I don't care what a spouse told you. I don't care what life has told you. God says you are my beloved. You are called for such a time as this. You have been anointed. You are chosen. And I came to set the captive free. You don't have to wear that label. You don't have to be bowed over together. He said, I saw the 18 years ago of what happened. See, I love that, that Jesus saw and he knew exactly what had happened to her 18 years ago. And then verse 13 says something. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately, y'all aren't getting it right there, but some of y'all, y'all can wait 10 more years. I'm not waiting 10 more years because I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that there's an immediately going to be released this morning. There is a suddenly that's going to be released this morning. There is a breaking through that's going to re be released this morning. See, that's why I couldn't play games in prayer. We couldn't pr play games in worship because we didn't have enough to do three songs that were on the set list. We just flowed with the Holy Spirit. Why? We're, I'm not bragging on us, but what I'm saying is we could not come 
come and do church as usual. That's what they were doing in the synagogue, and this woman was bowed together. See, I believe there's some people that are in this room that have been tormented by the enemy, and, and people have been satisfied with do church and then let you go home, but I'm not satisfied because I see by the Spirit of the Lord, I heard him say, I saw what was done to you. I saw what the enemy has attempted to do, but it will not work. I spoil the plan of the enemy today. I break every generational curse. I break every report of the devil. And I say today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day of freedom. And immediately... And immediately, some of you are about to receive and immediately. Some of you are about to receive us suddenly. And immediately, this woman was made straight and she glorified God. See, God does not get glory from you being defeated. God does not receive the glory from you being bowed over with limited sight. He says, no, I'm going to lift up the ones that no one thought. He said, I'm about to bless some people out of season. Some ones that nobody looked at that thought that God's not going to bless them. They've always been like, I've known them for years. They're always like that. God said, I, I'm, I'm no respecter of persons. But get ready. Just like I saw in that vision, one was at the top and they were so distracted they couldn't even see the sights that were going on around them. And God said, I brought them down. And he said, I lifted up the one that was trying. I lifted up the one that had no vision. But that they were down there and they were trying with all their might to push the buttons. See, some of you came in this room and you've been trying. You've been saying, God, I want more of you, but it seems like nothing I'm doing is working. But God says, get ready because I'm the one who lifts up one and takes down another. Get ready. I have seen your effort. I have seen what you have been doing. I saw you when you prayed and no one was looking. I saw you when you sowed a seed and didn't have it. I saw you when you were faithful to church, when everybody said, sleep in. Your flesh said, sleep in. But he said, I saw all your efforts and today I announce that God is raising an elevated vision he said I saw you see these religious people thought she was unworthy these religious people I hate the spirit of religion uh, more than anything else I would rather have somebody that's in the world and set them free by the power of God than somebody that's trapped by the bounds of religion because that spirit is mean that spirit sounds right, but it's devilish. That spirit has wrong motives. That spirit kills. You, 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 some of y'all faced it. Th that religious spirit will murder with the tongue. It will murder. Mm. But I, I'm telling you today that God is raising up some people that the world does not think it's ready. That, that the world thinks, oh, oh they're, they're, they're bowed together. That's who they are. Just be satisfied over there. But I know there's some people in this room that aren't satisfied. I know there's some people in this room that say, I refuse to stay in this lowly condition. I refuse to stay bent over another day of my life because I hear the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord is get ready to be launched. Get ready for elevation. Get ready for expanded vision. He said, I'm going to expand. He said, your condition left you with limited visibility. Because that's what the enemy does. He's after your vision. He's after your vision, church. He's after, he doesn't want you to see yourself in what God has called you to do. He doesn't want to see you to see yourself free from the labels. He doesn't want to see yourself free from addiction. He doesn't want to see yourself free. Some of you need to get an expanded vision this morning. You need to see yourself free from that addiction, free from that weight, free from depression, free from torment, free from the entrapments of the enemy whom I hear for this morning. God says to you, he that the Son hath set free is free indeed. You don't have to stay bow, bowed over. Jesus saw her. And said, loose her. And at the very word of Jesus, at his word. See, what I'm preaching to you right now is the word. 
See, prophetic messages are powerful. I love to receive prophetic words. In fact, I have a whole drawer, a whole file full of them, and I war with my prophecies. But the most powerful word that you can ever receive is the word of God. I need an amen right there. And he says to her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. See, God is about to do something in this room. He's about to do something in this generation that's going to make religious people mad. God is going to raise up some ones that have been at the bottom of life. See, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, get ready to see, get ready to see some people that were trapped in witchcraft, trapped in addiction, trapped in, in homosexuality, trapped in different uh, uh, arenas of life that the enemy tried to label them and say, this is what you are. This is what you'll always be. Just get used to it. You can go to church and you can try to worship, but good luck because you are bent over. You're bowed together and nothing you do is going to stop that. See, that's what I've come to, to serve notice on the devil today, that we aren't staying the same. I know life said one thing, but I know the word of God says another thing. I know that labels have been placed on each one of us. Don't think it doesn't happen to everybody because it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Rain happens to everybody. We all go through struggles and trials and temptations and tribulations. But God says to you this morning, that label is being stripped off of you. And you're getting a new mantle. I hear that right now. The Holy Spirit saying, you're receiving a new mantle. And immediately, suddenly, unexpectedly. See, that lady didn't expect to be healed. She was just doing all she could do to be faithful. And when she did, immediately, she was made straight. And the word teaches us, and I'm, I'm going to just be a couple more minutes. Y'all stay with me. Just a few more minutes. But the word says, immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So it was a demonic spirit that had held her bound. And then immediately it went from her. See, I know we like to make sense of things. So we want to counsel out demons. I'm not against Christian counseling. Not against it at all. In fact, my spiritual daughter, Agnes, she is a, a licensed counselor. I believe in Christian counseling. So if you're in Christian counseling, don't think I'm rebuking you because I'm not. But, but there are some spirits. If you're dealing with a devil, that can't be counseled out. It's cast out. You can deal with emotions. You can deal with different things uh, in, in the natural. But, but some things are supernatural. See, this woman had a condition. It was a spirit. It wasn't just, you know, uh, she broke her back. and that's, It was a spirit that had attacked her. And some of you this morning, you need to understand the difference. There has been a spirit that has tried to attach itself to your life to keep you bound today, tomorrow, 10 years from now. But the the devil is a liar, and I hear the Spirit of God say, you came so that Jesus could set you free. He says, I saw, musicians, come on up. I hear the Lord saying, I saw how the enemy tried to grip you. He started when you were a little child. Because he knows, he, the devil believes the word of God over our lives more than we do. He saw how the enemy set you up to keep you bound. Started when you're three to keep you bound when you're 30. But Jesus said, I saw you and I see you today. And he sent me with a word to tell you, be loosed. Be loosed from 
that infirmity. It's the day to get fresh vision. He said, you've been looking from a limited perspective, but he said, it's time for you to be made straight and for you to glorify God. Come on, intercessors. I need some people to begin praying.